Hi, this is Luis Fernandez and I'm a field engineer with Go Engineer. In this video, we'll be showing you how to widen the internal raster's air gap in the InSight software to make a part lighter. A few reasons you may want to do this is to cut down on build time, lower your material costs, or you may just need a light model for testing purposes. In my example, I will be showing you a display model. This part has no other purpose but to look nice, so for that reason, I don't need it to be solid. Even a standard sparse fill will use quite a bit of material, so I will be tweaking a few layers to cut down on the material consumption. Alright, so let's go ahead and bring in the part. As you can see, the part is somewhat big as it extends close to 16 inches in the z-axis. This custom density trick will save us quite a bit of material and time. Okay, so let's get started. First thing first, let's set up our modeler. I'm going to be using our Fortis 450MC. I'm going to be using polycarbonate for my model material. PC support for my support material, and I will be building this at a 13 thousandths resolution. Alright, so let's go ahead and click on the green checkbox to save this. And now we're going to go ahead and change our build parameters. So, since we're going to be widening toolpaths, I'm going to go ahead and start off with a sparse interior fill. That's going to give me a good start. I'm going to leave the visible surface style as normal, and I'm going to keep the support style as basic. Alright, so now that we have our parameters set, I'm going to go ahead and reorient the part. I'm going to flip the part around to save on support material usage. So we're going to go ahead and flip it over and let's go ahead and slice the part. And after we slice the part, we want to go ahead and generate toolpaths. All right, so now let's go ahead and check this out from the top view. I'm going to go ahead and page up through some layers using the page up key on the keyboard so we can see what we're looking at here. So as you can see, these ratchets are already somewhat spaced out, but to save more material, I'm actually going to space them out even more. Uh, so let me go ahead and shade toolpaths so we can see this a little bit better. So this is actually what the machine is going to do, and this is the material that it's going to lay down. All right, so now what we want to do is we actually want to start changing some of these layers. So I'm going to go ahead and work my way up, starting from the football, and eventually I'll get up to the base. Uh, but what we need to do now is we need to find which layer we're going to start changing. So right now I'm at layer 96, and layer 96 is actually a good layer to change just because we do have a few outside contours. Uh, if I step down, let me go ahead and page down through these layers, eventually I will get to these outside rasters. Um, if I start changing up these layers, it can actually affect the appearance of the model. These are actually visible surface rasters, so we don't want to touch these, we don't want to change them at all, we want to stay away from them. So let me go ahead and page up, and we'll find our first layer. It looks like 74, 73 would work, but I'm just going to go up to 75 just because that's an easier number to work with. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and create a custom group. All right, so to create the custom group, we want to go ahead and go up here to toolpaths and then click custom groups. And now we're going to get this new menu over here. So we want to create a new group. We're going to go ahead and click new and we're going to get this window that pops up. So I'm going to go ahead and change the color to magenta. That's just a color that nothing else is using so we're going to know that okay that's going to be our first custom group so what i want to do now is i want to go ahead and click on this template button down here and we want to go ahead and click on part sparse this is actually going to give us a good start it's going to start changing some of these numbers up to uh, replicate a sparse interior fill so i'm going to go ahead and click this green checkbox and now what we want to do is we want to actually change the sparse raster air gap value from 0.11 to something a little bit wider so we're actually going to change it to 0.16 and I'm also going to change the group name to 0.16 just to make it easier for me to uh, start adding layers to this group. So I'm going to go ahead and hit this green checkbox and now you see that we have it here. So we are already at layer 75, that's the first one that we want to change. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and uh, unshade these toolpaths so we can actually see the color. So we can see that that's just standard red. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to add layer 75 through 80 to this custom group. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and make a range. I'm going to go ahead and click bottom, page up, I'm going to go to 80, click top, and then I want to view my range. So now I'm actually viewing a number of layers, not just one. And now what I want to do is I just want to highlight them and click add. So you can see now they turned that magenta color and now we can go ahead and process this group to see how it changed
All right, so this is what it looks like now. Um, you step back down to that layer 74, that standard, you can see that it did get a little bit wider. So now what we wanna do is we wanna keep doing these. And the next one that I'm gonna create is gonna be pretty much the same steps, but I'm gonna change this from 0.11 to 0.21 now. And then I'm gonna change the group name as well to 0.21. Cyan is good. Hit this green checkbox. And now we're gonna go up to layer 81 make that the bottom, step up, we'll go to layer 86, make that the top, view my range, grab these layers, go ahead and hit add, and now you can see that those are Cheyenne, so I'm going to go ahead and hit that group, generate toolpaths again, so I'm going to generate toolpaths for the uh, Cyan group, and now you can see that those are actually a bit wider than those first 0.16 and basically we're going to do the same step over and over again up until we get to 0.31 so I'm going to go ahead and create those other custom groups now alright so I just finished creating the rest of those custom groups so now what we're going to do is we're going to add five or six layers to that 0.26 so I'm at layer 87 now I'm going to go ahead and make that the bottom of my range I'm going to go up to 92 that top of my range, view range, click on that 0.26 and let's go ahead and add these to my group and uh, we'll come back and process those uh, later. Now what we're going to do is the rest of these are all pretty much going to be a 0.31 uh, but we'll come back to the 0.31. Basically what we need to do is we need to step all the way up to the point where that rastering comes out again. Alright so we're getting to that raster again. So let me step down a little bit, and I'm going to use layer 395. Alright, so now what we want to do is we want to do the same thing. So we're going to use 0.16, make that the top of my range, step down a few layers, make that the bottom of my range, view my range, add this to the 0.16. And then we're going to do the same thing, top of my range, four, five layers, bottom of my range, view range, 0.21, add, and then we're going to go ahead and step down, top of my range, three, four, five, bottom of my range, view range, and then we're going to add this to 0.26. And now at this point, we can make this the top of my range and step all the way back down. to where we meet that 0.26 group again. So it's going to be up to this point. So make that the bottom of my range, view my range, and all of these will be 0.31. All right, so now at this point, I'm going to go ahead and view all of my layers. So you can see the colors from standard magenta, cyan, and then we have that light red, and then that yellowish color. So you can see, basically what we did here was, instead of going from a standard all the way up to that 0.31, is we close the gaps slowly, and we open them up slowly uh, just to get to that 0.31. We didn't want to go from standard to 0.31 immediately because then that can cause issues. So that's pretty much it for the ball. Um, now for the base, I'm just going to go ahead and click this pick tool. And let's go to like a front view. Let's go ahead and click on one of these layers. All right, so let me step down a little bit. Actually step up. Okay, here we go. So let's go ahead and do the same thing for the base. So we can start at layer 501. I'm going to go ahead and make that the bottom of my range. Two, three, four, five top of my range, view range, and go ahead and add this to the one point or the uh, point one six. That the bottom of my range, two, three, four, five, top of my range, view range, add it to the point two one, and then do it again. Add it to the point two six. 
and the rest of them are going to be 0 0.31s. But let's go all the way to the top and let's pretty much do a good, let's see that solid layer, one, two, three, four, five of standard. And then we'll step down one, make that the top, one, two, three, four, five. Bottom of my range, U range, add to 0 0.16, one, top of my range, one, two, three, four, five, bottom of my range, U range, add to 0 0.21, top of my range, one, two, three, four, five, bottom, U range, add, and then last but not least, we'll do the rest as 0 0.31. So top of my range, and we're going to step all the way down to where we meet that 0.26 again. All right, so here we go. Make that the bottom of my range. Do this range. And I'm going to go ahead and add all of these to 0 0.31. All right, so now at this point, I can go ahead and process my whole part again. All right, so now that we process the whole part, now you can kind of see what everything looks like. So if I go to the top, we'll step down. You can see the standards, then it turns into that 0.16, then the 0.21, 0.26, and then finally the 0.31. So you can kind of see how those rats are a lot wider now. Um, so now, if we really wanted to print this, then we'd actually have to run support material. Uh, generating support materials is actually going to delete our toolpaths, so I'm going to go ahead and say yes. After it's done processing supports, we're going to go ahead and reprocess our toolpaths. Alright, so it's completely done generating supports and generating toolpaths, so I'm going to go ahead and view all my layers. And now you can see I ran a uh, estimate build time, and it's going to take 18 hours, 45 minutes to build. It's going to consume about 52 cubic inches of model nine cubic inches of support and if we compare this to a default sparse fill you can see that the default is actually going to take a little bit longer to build and we are going to be saving about 30 cubic inches by using the method that we just described I actually wanted to show you a picture of what it looks like in real life after it's been 3d printed so this is with the top cut off so you can kind of go in here and see what the rasters are going to look like and this is what it's going to look like without the top cut off. All right, so this is the end of the video. Again, this is Luis Fernandez with Go Engineer. Hope this video helps. Thanks for watching.